these things, what, what I be noticing with people, it's all emotions, bro. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to, if you don't know, if most people don't know how to properly manage their emotions, right? So you got to be the kind of person that you know, how, you got to know how to manage your own so that way you can navigate through other people's bullshit. And that, that's, that's, that's what I, I'm, I mean, not what I try to do. That's what I do the most of. Like, I do that. I, heard, I said I heard what you said. I heard you was right. Mm -hmm. You do How to approach that situation. It's like, yeah, first and foremost, yeah. you apologize. Yeah. Just, just, just a, 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 a admit what happened. Say you sorry. And then you can move on from it. Yeah. But, but see, what, what, here's what happens. Here's, here's the nature of conflict, right? You'll, you'll. You'll come in here. Let's say you come in here. You got an attitude about whatever. You say some slick shit to me. All I know is the slick shit. Or right, you said some slick shit. <laughs> I'm going to argue back. Yeah. Right? And now we're going back and forth. But once you get to the bottom of it, something might have happened with you and your wife at home. Mm -hmm. And that's why you got some slick shit. Now, here's the thing. You shouldn't take that out on other people. But there is no should. You understand what I'm saying? Like in life, there is no shoot. Mm -hmm. It's just what the fuck happened. Because I may feel like you should be more mature than that, but you're just not there yet. Yeah, that's what, that's <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, so if a law didn't see fit for you to be at that point yet, who am I to say, yo, you should do this? Now, technically, I, I could say, yo, at your age, you should know better. Yeah. But how, really. how do, yeah, really, 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 yeah. Because of the, uh, it depends on everybody's the every is. everybody's experience is different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why like, I think like kids hate when you say that. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I was your age, I never did nothing like that. Mm -hmm. They you judging them based on your level of maturity and they're not at that moment in their life. But what I what I try to do, I don't um I just worry about me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I try to control your emotional aspect and the arguments. Yeah. Or so like because all situations. Yeah, in all situations. Yeah, you're supposed to be like that because then you get a fair judgment. But yeah, but like so sometimes that stuff piss you off though. Nah, you know, it definitely you know? it bro, it always pissed me off because for me things like all right, for me things have to make logical sense, right? Now, especially when you're talking to women, women don't always make logical sense to me. You know what I'm saying? So like, cause, the, cause their logic, it's not that they're illogical. It's just that it's coming based on a feeling. Emotional men, I run into that shit with too. But the, 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 what I'm saying is, people will think that you're supposed to understand what they're conveying. I don't know what the heck you going to do. Exactly, but especially if you don't convey it properly. So I'm a person. I need complete sentences. You, you. It, yeah, but look, but look. That's not fair, DJ, some, because you don't understand the people you're dealing with. Everybody don't have that type of proper grandma or proper no, dog. No, no, no. What or I mean, they don't have that type of listen, way of conveying listen, like this. Listen, sometimes people, they'll, they'll, I'll give you an example. This happens every single day in here. Somebody comes to sit in a chair mm -hmm. and they say, oh, yeah, cut, cut me like this. Or cut, cut me like um last time. I don't remember last time. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll say, yo, give me a two. Give me a three on top. No, listen, show me what you want. Because what you think a two is, is not what a two is. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this isn't a, a, a metric system. Like, they think it is. So, like, you'll get one haircut from one barber. He'll tell you, yo, I use a two with the green. And you think you come over here and you tell me, yeah, this is the formula. Well, if that's the case, then every barber should be able to cut you the same way. It's not that way. You have to convey properly. So people, what they do, they talk in incomplete sentences. I, I don't do well. It's not. All right, I take it. It's not that I don't do well comprehending it. I can comprehend it, but I want to be fair to you, and you I sure don't. You get what you I want to make you sure know. I understand what you're saying. And this isn't just with haircuts. This is if I'm talking, if I'm having an argument, a debate, or a conversation. People like she does this in every day. She she. And this is just her nature. She'll say, "Hey, C, remember that thing? You know what I'm talking about? Never, and somebody, like yeah, that'll be the whole yeah, sentence. Yeah, yeah. Remember, remember that thing we was watching the other day? I'm like, what are you talking about? Remember that post I sent you? You know the thing with the guy 
Remember the guy, and I'm like, because she don't want to tell you. Direct. No, it's not she want to tell you direct. That's just how she speaks. So when she speaks that way, and like, I'm like, what, what the you fuck you talking, talking about? Yeah. And she's like, and then get mad. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Remember that? And I'm like, I don't, I don't, because I need it clear. Now I could assume, and then if I assume, and I think you talking about one thing, it really ain't that or something else. Then you're gonna be upset with me. So that's why I try to. But what what I do. Yeah, but usually when people say that, they don't want everybody else to hear what y'all talking about. No, that's understandable too. But I can, let me tell you, this isn't just what I heard. That's what every, that, not everybody, but a lot of people. But so, you conversate with a lot of people. Yeah, I, I do. But what, what, what I'm so saying. I ain't saying they expect you to know, but the last time I was here, I, you don't remember what we was talking about last time? No. Yo, all right, for instance, just like the haircut thing, right? I cut a lot of people hair. Yeah. Bro. So if right. somebody say, Yo, man, like, hey, you, don't remember, you remember everybody's conversation? No, no, no. Check me out. They'll say, cut me like last time. Now, if the last time was two weeks ago, of course I remember. But some people don't come for six, seven months. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. You ain't been That's here three, different. four months. I don't yeah, remember. That's different. Now, oh, here's another thing. People will do this. They'll show a picture. So, here, I'll make me look like this, right? All right, I'm looking at the haircut. So I might say, okay, cool. The haircut is whatever it is. I can replicate the haircut. I'll replicate the haircut. I'm like, oh, you ain't cutting like the picture. What do you mean? They weren't talking about the haircut. They were talking about style. I'm not a stylist. You understand what I'm saying? So what the hell does that mean, CJ? I'm lost now. All right. If check I say cut my hair like this, oh, that's what I expect you to do. No, but all right, check it out, right? It's a difference. So you cut grass for them, right? Yeah. All right. So you a landscaper. Now I can cut grass, but I can't cut grass like you oh, do. Yeah, the yeah. actual act of cutting the grass is one thing. Cutting yeah. the grass with some style is a complete... That's your oh, own yeah, little flair right, that you put right, right? right? It's the same thing with cutting hair. So somebody may show me a haircut that someone else did that's their style is on it. Or, for instance, like, like I said, I'm not a hairstylist. I can style hair, but that's not what you're paying me for. Yeah. So if you come to get a haircut... I'm here to give you the haircut. If you want a haircut and a style, that's more money. But if you're showing me, women do this all the time because I cut a lot of women. They'll come for a haircut. They'll book appointment for a haircut. Cool. I'll cut their hair down to the length that they want, do the part, do all that stuff. And then they say, well, how come you didn't bump my, my curls? I'm not doing that part. Not because I can't. You didn't pay me for that. So my thing is, if you go to a hairstylist, most hairstylists can't do the haircuts that I can do. Yeah, I'm about to say that. I can do some of the hairstyles that they do. The difference is if you go to them to get my haircut, they're going to fuck your haircut up and they're going to charge you $60 for it. Mm -hmm. You want to come to me and give me $30 or $40 for, for a haircut that's way better than what they gave you. And, and you want to style. Yeah. But you go to them, you're getting the haircut and style. They're going to send you out of there. Yeah. You spend a buck twenty. I know that 20. same thing because a person to say that same thing to me. Mm -hmm. I cut my dress don't look like that. Because you didn't pay for that. Yeah. So there's yeah. a difference that between... all the time. Yeah, so know? just a cut. You might say, all right, cool. A regular, I don't know how much hair, uh, but for like a regular size yard, it might be yeah, $50. Like, yeah, right. Cool. But I'm just coming and cutting your shit down. I'm not getting the fucking blower out. I'm not trimming the hedges and shit. To get all of that, yeah. that's style. I'm yeah. styling your shit now. Yeah, Yo, you're exactly right. So, yeah, you, you, you feel like, what I'm saying? Nah, that's, that's exactly how it goes. Like, mm -hmm. nah, you just told me to cut your grass. But, but the point I'm making is, when it comes to communication, back to the original point, it's like, when, one, you have to, com you, it, most people don't communicate effectively. So, me, you and I, we can talk. Because we communicate. Because when you when you when you talk, when you converse with a person, you're an active listener, just like I am. I'm an active listener. I don't speak from. Oh, so you saying most people they don't speak listen to reply? Yeah, yeah. So usually, what happens if you're in your feelings about something? Oh yeah, yeah. Right? What would have happened? Yeah. I'll say something. It triggers something in you. Now you're not considering what I'm saying. You're just considering your reply. Yeah. Like women do this shit all the time. Talk. They yeah. wait for you to and, and, yeah. and I, I tell you, I, I don't want to just put it on women. I'm saying specifically the women that I've been with do that all the time. Right? They've done that. Well, I can say, CJ, because I work around a lot of men. Men do that too. I'm, I'm about to go there next. So, when we were having a conversation that day with Chewy, that's exactly what Chewy do. So, if you, if you hear 
if you will go back and watch that video, right? When when we when we was in here, me and him was arguing. The thing with that, right? All right, is that how you speak to somebody that always think they right. But that's, that's what the that argument. But be. that's where I was going. His. His feeling and his preoccupation is with the fact. It's not about what we were talking about. It's about CJ always think he's right. Yeah. The thing is, I don't think I'm right. The thing here's the thing: I can communicate more effectively than you can, and because you can't communicate with me, on like not on the same I level, know what you're but because you can't get your point across the way I can get mine off, you. You write that up, and CJ think he right all the time. I don't think I, you can't tell me what I think. So if you if you remember in the video, mm-hmm. I kept saying, I said, "Bro, you can't tell me how, how I feel. You can't tell me what I think." I, I do that every bro every so time. So you saying that the person chooses to say CJ think he's always right because they can't have an intellectual debate. With but you? it it's emotional. Understand? What I'm it's like fences. You ever when you was a kid, right? <laughs> when when you when you were a kid, you ever you ever go out. And play ball or dodgeball or basketball, say. and somebody get up. Somebody, I'm taking my ball. I'm fucking yeah. going home. That's the equivalent of it. So what happens? Somebody starts scoring on you too many times. Now you get mad. You don't play no more. That's emotion. That's the same thing. We we have conversations, yeah, and then we human beings. Who going, who can shield the emotion out of a conversation? No, it's not. It's not that you you can shield the emotion. It's it's called being uh, objective, right? So. What I'm saying is, I'm an active listener. I like to debate. I don't mind debating because it challenges me. It challenges my perspective. I'll sit here, me and you could go back and forth about something and disagree. And if you actually touch on a point that I'm like, yeah, I didn't really consider that. And if I feel that's right, like, yo, you know what? He's right. He proved me wrong. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to change my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not going to argue something just for the sake of arguing because I want to be right. There's, there's, and here's, here's the thing. No, that's the thing. The thing, the thing is, is people won't say nothing to CJ because they know that he's going to. But no, it, it's not. People that, wouldn't say nothing. No, like, people no, won't say. Quiet. People won't say anything, or, or not that they won't say anything. They will say something, but they'll leave conversations upset because they don't feel like they can win the conversation. The, the point is, I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm not trying to win a conversation. Mm-hmm. We're talking. I feel how I feel. Until you can give me evidence that will change my perspective. Mm-hmm. But if you don't do that, I'm still feeling how I feel. If the person feels like, if they, if they are, are talking to the other person, they say, oh, I, I'm not able to change his opinion, then they feel upset and they feel like I wasted my time. Because your goal, oh, no, your goal it. wasn't to actual actually benefit from the conversation your goal was to prove me wrong and that's why I'm like ain't no point talking about so going back to the original point we was talking about why do people uh, communicate the way they do it's like look if you can learn if you can train yourself it's not to take not to have emotions it's like yo you can't make decisions with your emotion so imagine if the president every time he got upset he went and bombed a fucking country. You can't do that. We would be in war. We wouldn't have no country. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So, as a husband, as a father, every time something comes to you, yo, you have to analyze it from every perspective of for you act. If not, you're going to go to jail. Because the first person that that say something out of line to your, to your, to your you daughter, no. you're going to go, I'll give you a perfect example. Perfect example, right? Without going all into detail. But, what, remember I was saying about that stuff was going on with my son, right? With the yeah, son of his girlfriend, right? right? So, um, it's a long story, but basically, the girl was dead wrong. She really took advantage of my son, right? Straight up took advantage of him. And they had a car. He he co-signed a car for her to get. And she 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 banged the car up, put it in an auto body place, right? In Philly. And... When they broke up, she wouldn't get a car back to him, right? So we we trying to hunt the place, hunt the car down. We going to the police department. We doing all this. We trying to report a stolen. We couldn't get none. So when, once I finally kept threatening her and threatening her, she finally gave in. Turn, turns out the car was with her other boyfriend that she was cheating on my son with, right? And 
he was holding it and acting like he was somebody else. He was trying to get money out of out of her and my son to get a car back. It was a, it was a mess. All because and all this stuff I told my son, but you know he didn't listen. So long story short, she dropped the car off at the house at like one o'clock in the morning, right? So she texts me, "Yeah, your car is outside." I'm like, "Whatever, you fucking skank, right?" So <laughs> I ain't, I ain't call out a name, but I was like, "Yo, you a bum?" And I told her, I said, "Yo, you you gonna need a lawyer?" She said, "She said." She said, don't contact me no more or I'm going to get my dad and the lawyers involved. So I said, yo, you need to get your lawyer because you, you, you're going to go through it. So she said, and I called her bum. So she says, um, she said, oh, really? Well, here's the, the, I just told my dad that you called me a bum. Here's his number. You can speak to him about it. So I, I was like, hell yeah, I want to talk to an adult. I called a number. It's like two in the morning, too, when it's going on. So I called. And um, he um he answers the phone. He answers all value. Oh yeah, nigga, you call my daughter a bum bitch, bitch. I said, oh bro, I didn't call your daughter a bum bitch. I called her a bum. So he says, yo, you disrespect my daughter. Her name ain't bum. Her name is yada yada yada. You do that. I said, no, bro. We go back and forth, and I'm trying not to argue with him because I don't know the brother. Mm -hmm. I don't know him from can of paint. So I said, yo, mm -hmm. I said um, I said, do you know everything that happened here? I don't care what happened. I'm just telling you to call my door and get ugly and get like this. I said, my nigga. <laughs> so now, mind you, and I'm on first impulse of arguments. I'm, I want to fight. Like, not because I'm mad with him, but all the bullshit that she caused my son. And when I tell you, she fucked the boy credit up, fucking cheated on him, had a nigga in the house, um, fucking stole the car. It was all this shit. And I was so mad. I wanted to fight somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My son, it is his fault to let it happen. But at the same time, it's like, yo, you're not going to... My son's a good kid. He's a little naive, but he's good. You took advantage of this kid. Now, I can't fight a woman, especially no young woman. So when he talking tough Tony to me, I'm like, word, I could fuck this nigga up. <laughs> that's it. That's why I was... That's my, my... But that's emotions. That's my feelings, yeah. right? So we going back and forth. And then I don't know what made me... Calm down. The same thing happened when her her sister had called me and me and her were going back and forth about it. And I like at one point she said, Well Lahi. And I was like, Oh, she Muslim. So I said, Yo, calm down. I said, let's not do that. And then once we got to the gist of things, I explained everything. So it was the same and once I explained it, I apologized, she apologized, and when I told her everything was going on, she was like, Yo, my sister dead wrong. I'm sorry. Right? Same thing happened with the dad. The dad apologized? Yep. So what happened, the dad, something caught me. I think it was the fact that I remember the day before the sister had said, well, Lord. So I wasn't, I said, maybe you Muslim. Don't, don't, don't go off on like that. So what happened, I, um, I told him, I said, bro, I said, I'm not sure if you know the full story of what happened here. I, I didn't call your daughter a bum bitch. I did call her a bum, but this is why I called her a bum. I said, she did a lot of bum shit. Stole a car, did insurance fraud. Like, she did a lot of stuff to my son. And my son was only trying to help her. You know what I mean? I told him not to help her, but he still went out and did it. And now all this mess. And I said, and once I explained it to him, and here's what happened. I I think I, I, I said my name in the process. Like, some kind of, I was like, yeah, she said to me, CJ, yada, yada. And he said, hold up, hold up. Your name CJ? And I said, yeah. He said, you from Pleasantville? I said, yeah. He said, did you used to work in Mr. Miller Barber shop? I said, yeah. He said, yo, man, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. And I said, I said, I said, what's your name? So he told me his name. I didn't recognize his name. But he said, yo, I'm from Woodland Avenue. I grew up in Pleasantville. I remember your dad. I remember you at the barbershop. Bruh, you got a good son. You raised a good son. I didn't even mean to scream on you like that. I just was in my emotions because my daughter called me and said somebody called her a bum bitch. So I just went off. But I know my, this is what he said. I know my daughter's a fucking con artist. He said, I know she a bum. And I know she full of, she gonna go to jail. And she deserved to go to jail. Because all she do is lie. And her lies and caught up with him. Mm. The dude apologized to me. He even went as far, he said, I don't even know why I was talking crazy like that. I got fucking pins in my back. I got a bad knee. I can't be fighting nobody. Mm. And I said, bro, I'm sorry. He started telling me all the self complications and all the stuff he went through with her mother and all this stuff. And so, my point of bringing up that story is, you don't never know what's behind somebody's mm. mouth. 
You know what I mean? And why are they mouthing off like that? So if you came in here and you just start bugging on everybody, you probably shouldn't be doing that because somebody probably whoop your ass for doing it. But at the same time, why was you doing it? If you was at home having an argument with Kiva, that would say why you did that. Or if I'm at home going through with my joint, with my wife, and then... Yeah, but y'all ain't got nothing to do with going in my house. No, you're right. But so the mature person doesn't... Take their shit out on somebody else. Bro, it ain't but like that. See, people yeah. ain't mature. So now, when you take they, that... They ain't going to agree with you with that. Cause, what? Because people measure maturity based on responsibility. You no. think that's true? No. How you measure maturity? I'm, I measure maturity based on your emotions, your ability to control your emotions. No, because I'm telling you, because people be like, listen, I'm a man. In my eyes, I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, you is not a man. From my perception. Mm-hmm. And they be like, well, I take care of my kids. Because of responsibility. They measure it by responsibility. I know, but what I, you just asked me, what do I equate? Yeah. I don't equate. Those things are supposed to do. Yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, so my... my our, I our, see it the same for, way. So now we're talking Muslims, right? In the same, our motto is the Prophet Islam. Right? Sorry, sorry. So at the end of the day, the Prophet Islam, he he... He went to war. People were trying to kill him for calling them to Allah. Yeah. Right? Yo, man, you got to stop drinking. What, nigga? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yo, oh, you, can't, you can't have 20 wives. You know, so all these people, he come and he's trying to change your whole way of life. Yeah. They think it. They threatened by it. They trying to murder him. Mm-hmm. Those same people, once he actually got them to come around, same people that were trying to murder him, he embraced with open arms and did the same. That's emotional maturity. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you look at it from that point, <laughs> we all talk about the Prophet say time being our motto, but we want to model him in our dress, in our beards, in how many wives we got. We want to model him with with the clothes that we wear. But it's what it, people always say it's his character. But yeah, his character was of righteousness. But he was emotionally mature. Yeah. So if now there were times he still had emotions. So remember that uh, when they brought the man, what's, I forget the you you the Sierra guy, but the man who what? had killed a uh, hundred like ninety nine. No, no, what was it the man that killed Hamza? Hamza? And yeah. they brought him Watch. to him, and he embraced his thing, and he said, "Okay, you must don't show your face. Him. Yeah, don't allow yeah. me to see your face. That's also emotional maturity. Like, listen. Yeah, but that's." You right. If you, you think right. about it, he's like, listen, he, I know myself. Yeah, I know myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's called that's emotional maturity. I know every time I see you, it's gonna bring about a feeling. So listen, yeah, you're, you're, you're safe with me. We're not gonna harm you. Just but just go about your business. Yeah. You go. That's emotionally mature. You know what I'm saying? And and at the end of the day, that's the. It's not that people aren't learning. People learn on their own uh, clock. They're not going to learn on your clock. So this is one thing I had to learn, right? When when I was going through therapy. So how do you raise your son, your kids, to, to be like that? No, the same way. This one, this one point, right? Mm-hmm. So when I was going through therapy, this is four or five years ago, right? I went through therapy. I was going through all this stuff. And I thought at the time, because I went through therapy, that when me and my ex-wife were trying to get back together, I figured, oh, okay, well, we should be able to fix this because I did the work. Like, I went to therapy. My therapist told me, she said, no, you did the work, right? But she didn't do any work. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to be patient with her. At the time, I don't want to hear that shit, right? But she was right. She was 100% right. So every time we're trying to fix our situation and... All right, cool. I'm being more empathetic. I'm being more patient. I'm being more understanding. I'm being listening to your needs. And all she's doing every time she got upset with something, you marry somebody else and then tell me you did this. You cheated on me. You you ignored me. And every time we got in an argument or or not even an argument, any time she got reminded of that feeling, she would bring the shit up and hold over my head. You know what I mean? Going through my phone. You know. Going through, like, oh, who commented on you? Like, all that. And after a while, so I'm going to the therapist. I'm like, yo, she won't stop. He said, yo. I mean, she said, yo, she's not going to stop until she 
grows up. Yeah. She's yeah, got to learn how to let it go. And if she doesn't do the work, she's not interested in coming to therapy or talking to a therapist. She doesn't see anything wrong with what she's doing. She sees you as the aggressor and she's the victim. Mm-hmm. And you're always going to be there until she grows up. So you have to decide whether or not you're going to be patient with her or not. Now, here's the emotional mature thing to do. All right, I'm not going to be patient with that. That's why I'm, I'm done. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's not just that situation. Every situation I get into. Yeah. And this isn't just uh, in relationships. This is my relationship with my best friend. I love him to death. But at the end of the day, when I need to tell him about himself, I'm going to tell him. And also knowing that he might not be emotionally mature to handle what I'm saying. He think I'm nitpicking. I'm not nitpicking. You know, you you're so what he do, I'm trying to win the argument. You ain't never right about nothing. You ain't never wrong about nothing. Right? That ain't what we talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talking about you not going to work. That's what we talking about. We ain't talking about me being wrong or right. What difference do it make? You're wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so now when you talk about kids, how do you teach your kids? Yo, you teach your kids by being honest. For one, giving a good example. I'm being honest with them. You know what I'm saying? So when you, yo, there been times, all right, I want to do something just last weekend, right? It was my fault with my daughter. And I, had, I gave her an apology. because, And it's a long story, but my daughter's learning how to do hair, right? And one of her friends wanted to, you know, her friends come and they, they oh, practice on me, do this, do this. She wanted to get color. Now, sometimes the people, they come here and they forget, maybe because I'm a professional, they assume my daughter's a professional, but my daughter's learning. So I have to walk her through it. So the girl wanted to get color done in the hair. And at the end of the day, it's really hard to go from something like when you're doing color, it's hard to go from black all the way down to pure white. Oh, that was I think I know what you were talking about, the one that was here. Um it was like, yo, why you do that? Why you ain't just go this color? Yeah, well that that was another time of day. Yeah. Okay. But people come and what what happens, they wanna go to a student, but they want professional work. And I'm like, yo, she a student, she's learning. So what happened, the girl came and I tried to explain to her, yo, man, you may damage your hair trying to get this all done in one day. This is usually a two or three week process. She wanted to go ahead and go. Now, as being the, the, the more experienced person, I should have told her no. I should have said, no, we're not doing it. But I didn't. I let her go ahead and do it. And that was irresponsible to me because, right. of course, when she damaged her hair a little bit, I'm not tripping about it. Fuck, we can cut some of it off. I can make you a little little design back there. And it's still looking nice to me. But the the trauma that the girl's going, oh, my hair broke over. And then she ain't blaming me. She blamed my daughter. And that's why I said, like, oh, shit. I had to apologize to my daughter for that. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, who the person you got to go to school with every day? Mm-hmm. Not me, my daughter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to sit there and explain. And here's the, here's the thing in this business. When... You mess something up. Well, not because she didn't mess nothing up. My daughter literally did nothing. She just followed the instruction that I gave her. Yeah. That I gave her. Right. But for me, I've been doing this for 25 years. So if somebody's not happy with something I did, I know how to handle. I've been going through for 25 years. Yeah. My daughter, she just learning. So her thing is like, oh man, they're gonna tease her. They're gonna tease me. They're gonna blame me. They're gonna. Let... And I've had to remember, yo, how was I when I went through? Because I started in high school too. I can remember. Yeah, and that might mess up her credibility. Exactly. Not just credibility, your confidence. Yeah. Now I'm saying, now it took me a long time to get tough skin. And everybody not like yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. You see what I'm saying? So, and that's the thing. Yeah. I, I can remember being in high school and you you know, you know, if I read Abdullah, yeah. right? Yo, bro. <laughs> that's my boy now. That's family, right? But back yeah. in the day, I when I was learning, I was learning how to cut. I was pretty decent. He came, got a shape up from me, got a little taper in the shape up. I was in tenth grade. He came, his normal bar wasn't there, so he went to me. And I cut him. He used to go to Swan Lane City. He transferred to Pleasantville for like a month or two. And I'm in, I'm literally switching classes, and he sees me, and I see him. I didn't know he went to my school. He like, yo, that's the guy that fucked my hair up in front of everybody. I'm like, yo, I wanted to fight, bro. Like, I, li- I wanted to fight this. And I'm like, yo, because everybody talking and all day long. Yeah, you fuck my hair up. I'm like, bro. I don't even know that nigga. And here's the crazy part. I didn't mess his hair up. It was just, it was a cool thing to make fun of me because I was starting. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what I tried to tell my daughter. I said, yo, you got to understand that in the beginning, people are going to talk shit. Many times, even now, like people come to me and they, they might say, oh, oh no, not, not even in person. Even better. I had a couple of videos go viral on Instagram. Right? Yeah. It, bro, I've been, ever since that one girl I did, now be like three or four ever videos and went nuts on the yeah, internet. Okay. So people be sharing my work and it's dope. But what happens, people, because... What, haters? To, I don't even say they're haters. They're just critical. Not, so they look for things oh, yeah. to I judge. Yeah. So, yo, last night, somebody's on my post and they're... I reposted this girl and she gets the front of her hair shaped up. Now, some women get it shaped up. Some people don't. This one does. The girl, somebody, a bunch of people come, oh, yeah, her line crooked. Her line. And I'm like, yo, bro, I watched a video of, of my own work. This is work I did back in March, right? Mm-hmm. I know damn well when I send this shit out here, the shit's right. Because if so, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have took no video or posted if the shit wasn't right. Yeah. But... They had me doubting myself. I seen so many comments. I'm looking, I said, yo, is that shit crooked? And I'm looking like, and I'm showing Keith. I said, he said this shit ain't crooked. I'm like, yo, tell me the truth. He said, nah, it's not. But they just on there talking. And so. He <laughs> inside of a bully. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. But people just, now, here's the thing. If you're an emotional person, you'll be like, really taking that shit to heart. You can't sleep at night. You upset. You arguing. <laughs> not me. I'm petty. So when people say slick shit in the comments. I'm gonna say slick shit back, cause I just I just like the joke, but I ain't really I, I don't take none of that stuff personal. But it takes time to learn it, and that's my point with 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 children or not not just children. You saying that they gotta go through it? Or you gotta, gotta go, through, but you don't know what somebody's experience is. Yeah. So even you, okay, cool. You come here forty years old. I may assume that you know how to manage your shit like I do, cause I'm forty. That don't mean that. Your experience, nah, man, you you be surprised. Mm-hmm. I know, from just from working with a lot of people, that man, that, that should be all messed up. Mm-hmm. Just managing their lives and that's what I'm saying. Some, some stuff you be like, I don't know. It's just because I measure people differently, and I'll be like, bro, you ain't you ain't you you fifty years old. You ain't get that stuff together yet. You still out here doing Some people things? don't do it. Yo, I'll give you an example. I wish I wish the sister was or could come here. I, see, we got I'm gonna start inviting people back. But I cut a sister that you know, right? I cut her hair. Most her sister. She older sister. And she looked nice to be older woman. Right? right. We just talking. I asked her, I said, yo, are you um are you are you still married or whatever? And she said, No, no, I'm talking to a brother. And she said, um, I'm talking to a brother, but I don't know how this is going to go. And I said, why? So she says, well, um, the bro- you know, a lot of these brothers don't want to step up. Now, I, I respect the sister, but I, in my head, I'm thinking, all right, she got to be either in her late 50s or early 60s. I'm not sure. I don't want to be. But she looks nice for age. So she want, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. But she said. These brothers don't want to step up. And so my head, I'm thinking like, what the fuck you want to step up for? You 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 got all your shit. By, by, by your age, your shit should be together. What do they got to step up for? And now, here's the thing. I understand the whole point of the brother's supposed to be the maintainer and all this. But here's the thing. In our society, you know, you're living single for however many years you've been single since your last husband. It's a lot of them like that. Exactly. So... My, that's my question. What is it that you need a brother to step up and do? Now, here's the thing. If you start with the, well, I need help. It's not wrong. Because to me, some of those things are not even mentionable to me. So, like if I'm with, if I'm married somebody and, you know, let's say, you know, we're older or whatever. You got kids, I got kids, whatever. And then... You need help with something. You reach out. I'm your husband. I'm going to help you if I can do it. But the expectation of, hey, you're going to marry me. And automatically, you're going to come in here and pay this, 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 and this. That's why niggas ain't getting married. But right. that, that could be negotiated on this. So. No, it, no, it can be. But my point is, why is a dude trying to... I'm not negotiating none of that. I'm telling you straight up. Me. I'm not negotiating none of that. If I meet a woman... And we start having to sit down. We start talking about stuff. Right. And you start talking finances and stepping up. Guess what? I'm not talking no more. Because I don't want to hear that shit. You should already have this shit together. So my thing is, I'm not coming in to come. Like, 
the benefit of marrying me isn't that I fucking pay for you now. That's not like you. I'm gonna fix your finances. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is the marriage thing not? It seems more like a business transaction now than yeah. an actual relationship. But, but no, so peep this. So the sister, the sister is telling me that, and so I said, well, but they only do that based on what they previously went through. And that, but no, but so when I asked, I asked her different things. I said, well, I said, you talking to the brother already? She said, yeah, he's a good brother. I like him. I said, so what do you think the issue is? She says, well, his, my ex-husband and him, they know each other. They're not friends, so? but they're cool. And I said the same thing. I said, so? And mind you, that was another case that we had. I was trying to, the last week when she came here, the sister was here, I was trying to get them to talk about that with you. That was the same case, but she wouldn't talk. But the, 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 the thing is, she said, well, they know each other. And I said, well, what does that got to do with anything? She says, yeah, but, you know, it's going to be, he, he feels like it's going to be awkward. Why, 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 the, why a brother's like that? I said, well, he values what he values. If he doesn't. They're not together, though. No, but no, my, my, my thing is, if, if a guy decides that that's not for him, that's not for him. She said, well, we still talking. And I said, well, then you need to shut it down and stop talking. Either yeah, brother right, going to marry you right. or he not. So long story short, when I go on and I ask her, I'm, I'm just throwing uh, scenarios at her, right? I said, I said, well. What if you met a brother? I said, why, why are you and your ex-husband just don't get back? Like, you wanna, if, if you don't meet the right brother, why are you and the ex don't get back? Oh, well, he jealous and he this and he, he want to do that. I said, well, oh, he won't step up. And I said, but what did, did he take care of? He was a good person. Yeah, he did, but okay. he won't. So, hear he, he, he me out. I said, well, why don't you just chill? Like, if y'all live separate. No, we can't live separate. And I said, but y'all already do live separate. So, she says, and I she said, well, he might want to be trying to get another wife or something. I said, well, what the hell is the problem with that? You fucking... Hey, 50. It's like, come on. Like, and my point, that's my you point. I'm not... say that, though. I be Did saying say it, though. That? Yes. Oh, because man. at the end of the day, it's it's like, you yo, ain't getting any younger. I would oh, tell man. my own daughter that. Yeah. That's what people may be thinking, you being judgmental or something. Like, yo, I would tell my own daughter that. If my daughter was 30-something, and you ain't been married yet. And you had whatever. I would say, listen, I'm going to find you a good guy. You're going to stop. You're going to have to stop being so picky. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have what you think is available to you really isn't available. to you. That's not no hate. I would tell my own daughter that. And to me, I just could not believe that it was a woman. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that her value is because it ain't about value to me. I'm just talking. Let's talk logic, not value. Cause said that that's the the thing that, that so, that's so, yeah. that's why they so, were so mad what, at Kevin Samuels. Was he actually a bad guy? Nah, I mean from so, what she was saying, they seem like a bad dude. So but, what was the reason? Was it him or was it her? Man, I don't know. But see, that's that's the thing. We back to emotional maturity, right? No, but, I'm saying that no, I'm saying wait, back. Wait. Get, no, here's my point. Okay, back to emotional maturity. How often do people actually point the fingers at themselves, themselves and you know, say, yeah. it ain't him, it's actually I, I, I said that to Kiva. That's a question I asked you. I said, mm-hmm. Kiva, how come women don't know? I've never heard a woman say, it was my fault. I never, since in this earth, 40 years old, I never heard a woman say that. Mm-hmm. Like, I messed that relationship up. I've heard, I've heard a few. But I've I mean, never heard that. I've heard a few. I, said, I actually saw somebody on Facebook this morning. Uh, the sister, one of the sisters I cut, and she said, I had a really good guy um, some years ago, and I messed, I can honestly say I messed that relationship up because I wanted to deal with his luck. But that's what Samuel, uh, uh, Kevin Samuel, Kevin Samuel said, he, he, he'll, he'll usually say that. He said, he said a lot. He said, well, why you don't go back to your husband? Go back to him. So, you know why? That pride. A lot of people pride. Can't, they and can't, the guy they probably didn't take him back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, but he, now here's the thing. To the women's credit, a lot of men, all right, cool, I'll take you back, but you're going to take me back without any, without bringing that shit up all the time. Without throwing it in my face. Nah. Nine times a ten, no. Because yeah. that is the problem with men. The, here, here's my problem with dude. Men are egotistical. Oh, yeah. They're arrogant. Fucking know it alls. That's why I get mad when people say that about me. Because I'm not any of those things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yo. My best friends in the world are women. The people I've learned from the most are women. So, like, uh, well, I wanted you to meet, but the girl that taught me how to trade, taught me investing, is a woman. You know what I'm saying? My therapist, woman. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like one of my shakes, woman. So like Aisha Beauty, woman. Like I'm yeah, like I, I give it up to women. Man, I got yeah. And so now my thing, I personally prefer the company of women because women they're more creative in their thinking. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna give you different views. Like they're gonna give you more colorful views. Well, Don't, well so so say if I said to you, well, you would say that because the majority of the conversations you have is are with women. Hmm. Well, somebody brought that argument up. And no, said you that, can't. Like, I'm, listen, you swaying more towards women. No, no, no. What, I advertise to women because I like women's money. But the conversations I have... women more committed. Yeah. Yeah. So, Men so that's just... Committed a, like women. Yeah, right? that, but that's just a financial decision I understood yeah. from doing business. But no, I have just as many conversations with men. Like, people may look at my Instagram and stuff and say, oh, he cut all the women. No, I just post all the women. That's that, to me, that's just... Makes business sense if there's a million and one barbers around here, right? They're all posting the same shape up and beard uh, yeah, and all that. Right. Cool. How do I stand out? You I'm gonna do what y'all don't kids. do. Here's the thing: I do them same shape up, some same men haircuts. I cut just as many kids, just as many old people. But why am I gonna post that on my page when the way I look at it, I can do, I can get one female to come in here, and the money she paid me. Will be more consistent mm -hmm. and more money That's than one dude. Yeah, so a brother like you, and this ain't, it's not like no, no, no discrimination, nothing, but the way I look at it is like, all right, let's say you a customer, you got three kids. So it's you and your three boys who come in, right? You want haircuts, but the quality isn't as important to you because you want more so of a budget now because you got four haircuts you got to get. Mm -hmm. So now you care, you ain't trying to spend. A hundred and eighty dollars, a hundred and fifty dollars every time you come. You're trying to find somebody's gonna give you the best uh, product for your money, and at the cheapest price. I don't want that client because you're not gonna come as often. You know what I'm saying? I want the the, the person, male or female, is gonna come every week, every two weeks, is trying to put sixty to a hundred dollars in my pocket. That's just smart business. So what I've learned, if there's not a lot of men, around, or Half the, half the stylists around here don't cut hair well. And I'm not just talking about short hair. They don't cut long hair or short hair. And I'm just when I say long hair, not just in this area, from here to Philly, right? They don't cut short hair well or long hair. Mm -hmm. Cool. I cut long hair and short well, hair well. Cool. There's no barbers around here that actually cater to women. It's like me and maybe, I can think of one other person that actually cater to women. So it's a no-brainer. I go on Instagram. I post some pictures of beautiful women. They're beautiful. <laughs> right? So then, now, it's nothing for a woman sees myself in Philly and drive down here. People drive down here from New York. I got clients that come from Burlington County. I got clients from Newark. Crazy. Yo, I had a girl text me. Everybody think I'm from Atlanta when they see my stuff, right? Somebody, somebody hit me on Instagram another day. Oh, somebody came from Newark. Yeah, people come from Newark, New York. I got a client from Baltimore. I got somebody from Delaware. I got a girl come from Delaware every two weeks, right? But, That's crazy. yo, this girl in Atlanta hit me. I always get people from Atlanta hit me. So they think I'm from Atlanta. But, but they hit me. Kill them all, man. I would, but the, the, the market is saturated. There's a lot of people to do what I do down there, yeah. right? But they hit me. This one girl, she hit me. She says, yo, I went to a barbershop and God messed me up. How far are you from such and such a part of Georgia? And I'm like, I'm not even in Georgia. I'm in New Jersey. She was like, oh, man, that's too far. And I'm joking with her. I said, yo, the flight only like $60, round trip, $70. Are you fine? Right in the main city, just come do it. I'll buy you lunch. Come on. She was like, yo, I'm asking, I'm coming. Really? <laughs> swear to God. Uh, <laughs> swear to God. She said, yo, I'm booking my trip. Come on, I'm just making a weekend out of it. I said, cool. She said, I want my shit right. So what I'm saying is that's why I post women. It ain't got nothing. That if, if, if little kids, were, yeah, if little kids were doing that, then I would market little kids. It's just, it has nothing to do. People are like, oh, yeah, you, 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 you must be talking all them girls. Nah, I ain't talking none of them. <laughs> none of them. Like, I literally, this you know, business. Everybody, somebody actually said that. They always say, oh, so you got all the bad. And they do be bad. I don't want them. That's not what I'm here for. This is business. Because here's the thing. You start messing around with your clients because a lot of barbers do that. You start messing around with them, the, 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 the word get out real fast. That's what you're doing, and then next thing you know, you got a whole bunch of people that hate you. 
A whole yeah, bunch of people gonna get busy. Say, yeah. It ain't worth it. And it's it's be a headache, bro. And it, and it, to me, it's it doesn't speak much about your opinion for women if you think that just because an attractive woman sits in my chair that we're automatically gonna be doing it. Like, what do you think about women? People do that. No, but I mean, I'm, that's, that's my a point. Large portion of but women. do you really respect women? Not just men that say that. I'm talking about women. My point is, y'all talk all that black woman power sisterhood shit <laughs> until somebody make you jealous or something, and then you say the corny shit. Do you really respect your own kind like that? Do you really respect respect oh, women? You if you think just... that every woman just because she attractive want to sleep with, why would she want to see me? All I do is cut hair. That's it. Like, I mean, I, I'm a good looking guy, but shit. Like, everybody ain't gonna. So that that's my point. I don't even. Long story short, women just have better perspectives to me than men. Problem is, they think what they got the emotion, and that's what I don't be wanting. But you ain't. You can't change that. I don't try to change it. So that's my point. My point is of uh, of acceptance. I try to accept things the way that they are in every situation. And I, I'm only saying that because. And you know of many, you should know of many scenarios with the process I had to deal with his wife. Mm-hmm. But sometimes he wouldn't even talk to her. I should say she knew when the process I was mad mm-hmm. at it because he wouldn't even say a word to her. Mm-hmm. And then he stayed in the master for 30 days, remember? Mm-hmm. Talking to none of them. Mm-hmm. But you said something that reminded me of a story when he was talking about Abu Zara. And he said, uh, uh, she was, it was a lady companion. She was married. She was telling the process on my Aisha was present at the time about her husband, Abu Zara. And she would praise Abu Zara and say mm-hmm. he was a good husband. And then he said he wanted to get another wife. This is, this is a real time. And she started making it hard for him. Mm-hmm. And she wanted out, right? Mm-hmm. Then she married another man and said, oh, I miss Abu Zora. I wish I had Abu Zora back. <laughs> and the Prophet said, so I looked at Aisha, he said, I am to you, like Abu Zara. Mm-hmm. So meaning, don't mess up a good thing. Exactly. Because you know, it's funny, I never even heard that story before. You never heard that? Mm-hmm. Why? That's he dope. said, don't, don't, he basically said, like, don't mess up a good thing because of how you feel. Bro, there's so many people that did that, bro. Male and female. Yeah. You know what I mean? Male and female. I, I honestly believe, in my opinion, CJ, a lot of people ain't built for relationships. Because they can't handle it. But they can't yeah, handle... But most. I'm, I'm speaking about males. A lot of males can't handle when women uh, 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 go through their emotional spells and they're ready to get out at the first sign of some type of... Uh, no, you, you're right. And that, that's what I'm saying. That's because they're not emotionally mature. Yeah. Now, but here, here's the problem. So... Women, a lot of times, not knowing that, like, so you put yourself in a woman's point, point of view, and they say, "All right, well, I married this guy for his potential. I think that later on he's gonna be, and then he ain't getting upset. That's why I say you don't marry somebody for potential, but I understand why they do because sometimes the men to their expectations. No, but a lot of you're you're right, but a lot of times men don't um. They might not mature to that level. So my 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 thing is when they say, "Oh yeah, I want a good man," or or, or ain't no good men. Nah, it's mad good men. Yeah, you got yeah. a lot of men that just aren't monogamous. Your issue is monogamy. You want monogamy. That's what the prophet says. I'm saying it's exactly. Story. So if if you want that, because the guy do everything right except for he like women. The problem is you're not gonna get that out of men. Most men. I ain't gonna say all. Oh, most men just like women. And that's how I was trying to explain to somebody last week. Bro, that argument. Bro, there you go. Never win that. Because then they'll be like, oh, uh, uh, why you got to like so many women? What you got a uh, uh, desire problem? Yeah, they always say that. And it's like, you're all right. So right. Look, that's look. like telling the prophet says something he had a desire problem. But see, people's standards. How many how many times you heard this? Somebody say, but you ain't the prophet says something. Like, come on. I know I'm I ain't the prophet. Yeah. Wait, wait. I'm not the prophet. So I'm, all these names y'all missing. I'm not him. I'm not Ali. I'm not Umar. I'm not Ibrahim. Mm-hmm. All of these these prominent figures that y'all that we all celebrate. I'm not Nabi Suleiman. Mm-hmm. They all had 
And, 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 <laughs> but here's the thing. But it's okay for them to have. And, and we don't know. We don't know how they really were because we they're glorified to us. You know what I'm saying? So we don't know. No, that's why you don't look in a pop or something like you look, look in the Sahabas. Mm -hmm. No, even them. We don't even know. Like, you no, might. They, they, they have no, to... no. But you, my, my point is that's not the subject that's celebrated. And you don't know all of it. So my, my, my point is, yo, you have to be patient with people. The best thing you can do is work on yourself. That's the only thing you can control. You know what I'm saying? So what, what I start doing, yo, just because I went to therapy and I worked some things out, I don't assume that that my lady did the same thing. I just don't. I just and it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with her. It doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm more mature. It doesn't mean it just means at the end of the day, I took some steps to to better myself and hopefully you're better from this. But sometimes we get in arguments and then it's like, all right, well, um, I don't like the premise that you're coming from. I, I try to explain it, but you might not grasp it. So if you decide to go be petty, you just got to be petty. doesn't mean I don't care. I just, I can't do that. Yeah, but you. that, like, usually after a while, that stuff will die now. And once the emotional subside, hopefully, then, yeah. Then now, for, for, so for a mature person, a rational person, once they, once it dies down, yeah, then they come back to their senses, they admit when they was wrong. Because they got to think. Yeah, yeah. But, but my thing is, I remember way back in the so when me and my first wife was together and we went to counseling with Imam Saluki, right? And my issue then, I was in my 20s, and my issue then was like, yo, she don't give me my rights. And she don't listen. And she don't, I tell her to do stuff, she don't do it. Or I ask her to do stuff, she don't do it. And, and, no, and here's the thing. Legally, legally, I was correct. Yeah. So, because legally, legally, my rights weren't getting met. I yeah. wasn't, you're not helping, you're not cooking, we're not fucking regular. Like, all those things wasn't what they were supposed to be according to Fick. But Saluki tells me, he says, listen, I, I know it's heady. And he even told her, he said, listen, you have an obligation to fulfill for him. Yeah, she do. Because yeah. if not, like, you and know, you're putting him. Too. Yeah, but, but and he told me, you know, you're putting him in a really tough situation because if he go and do something else like he can get himself in trouble yeah you know what i mean so and you're not realizing that mm -hmm. the cause of him getting this trouble could perhaps be because of you yeah now with that being said he also told me privately he said listen bro you have a great opportunity to get closer to a law to this situation oh uh, yeah because but i was 28 29, I ain't want to hear that shit. I knew it. Yeah. And I'm like, nigga, what are you talking about? And I said, I'm like, yo, like, that's some good Sufi stuff to hear. But I said, I don't, like, I want, yo, know, I want a woman that's going to yeah. listen to me. You know? And then so, bro, I ain't going to front. So when we, me and her broke up, and then, of course, I, I got on, I, I got an, another woman immediately. I shouldn't have did that. Wasn't fair to the new woman or to myself. But I jumped right into a situation, and that girl, was doing everything I wanted. But my heart was broke because I still wanted to be my ex. You know what I'm saying? So then I just took somebody to do a whole bunch of bullshit. Somebody knew they didn't deserve to go through none of that shit. Mm. Just for me and her to try to work out our situation. Mm. But I would have, at the time, I missed, I would have taken that headache that I thought was so bad, I would have took it back. But we fumbled the ball. That was my fault. Mm. I gotta say it's all my fault, but it was some of that was my fault. Because now, at my age now, I understand what he meant. Like, yo, man, be patient. Yeah. Not with her. This is a trial from the law. This has nothing to do with her. This is between you and the law. And if I would have just chilled out, I could have got through that. That would have been easy. Now, she married to somebody else. And that's, you know, we, we that's my friend. Or we friend. But she's, she do all the stuff that she wouldn't do with me. She do with him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, damn, if you would have. You learn. You learn. Yeah. And that's the thing. People don't look at relationships like that. Like, yo, you're two people that's grown together. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? All, 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 but all people see, they, when they hear that, they think you're growing as a couple. No, you're growing as two different individuals yeah, together trying. and a couple. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at it, yo, like, and I don't, I, I mean, you know your relationship better than me. It's yours. But at the end of the day, your relationship it's probably as good as it is because you guys actually treat each other as friends. 
right? Oh, yeah. That's your friend. Yeah. Before, it's your wife. Yeah, that's your friend. Yeah, they'll talk about everything. Because you're friends. Yeah. That, at the end of the day, so, if, if and I tell people this all the time, if you looked at, your, at your, your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, whatever, if you looked at them and treated them the same way you treat your mother or you treat your, your children, then you can work out most of your issues because you can't divorce your children. You can't divorce your mother. Mm-hmm. But as soon as your, your girl but piss you off. But going back to what I was saying is that the problem I have with people today is that as soon as they get in trouble with relationships, they ready to go. They ready to jet, man. Yeah, but, but that's, that's not how. It, because it comes from a place of defense. So I'm already defensive because I don't deserve this. I deserve it. Yo, Nick, that's arrogance. If you think you deserve, you deserve. Like, it's not about what you deserve. Like, you got somebody that's right now, it's different if a person beat you or if they yeah, don't feed you. Saying, right. You know what I'm saying? But, that, I, and, yeah, if you, you dealing yeah, with somebody. And that's real because a yeah. lot of some women that I talk to, when I hear that, I'm like, bro, ain't none of that stuff you saying is valid. Mm-hmm. Like a real valid reason to not want to be with a man. Mm-hmm. And so, but that, that's what I say. Some things we know. As men, we know that women can get emotional. We know the women be That's feeling. That, we know that they got jealousy. All right, cool. So we know that about them. You got to, as a man, you got to be patient with that. Right? But, but, yeah. but, hear me out. As a woman, I tell women, I say, yo, you know men can be suck up. They can be arrogant. Another thing, men like women. They like women. Yeah, All women. Yeah, yeah. You need to be patient with that because that don't just go away. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, yo, a nigga could say, yo, man, um, it's just me and you are monogamous. But, yo, a, a girl can go, come by and smell the right that's why I'm going to be around. Even, even in my scenario, CJ, realistically, I could say that at this moment in time and then five years now, I might be getting another life. It might change. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could change. Now, that's what I'm saying. It, men say that, mm-hmm. but it could definitely change. Cause it can I know change. a lot of men that are monogamous, married, and, and they say that, but they consider it getting another one. They have considered, they are considering two people I know that you know. I'm, I believe you know it. You know what I mean? I are considering it. getting another one. I believe it. Because the, the thing is, what if, what if, what if you, and they, they good dudes. They take care of their family. Yeah, but, but it, 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 this is the part that kills me. Women be thinking that because a man, not just got another wife, so I'm put it just in general for all all mm. races and religions, right? Oh, why why he cheat on his wife? Because she's beautiful. They don't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> like, they, one don't have nothing to do. Now, the times when I hear men say that shit, those be the niggas I say, don't get another wife. Or don't get another girl. If, oh, well, my wife ain't giving me no, I go get, nah, that ain't the reason. You know what I'm saying? If you naturally... You a nice talker, you nice person, and you can you can converse. Let's say you end up having a conversation with somebody, you just vibe with them. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Time, yeah, man. you vibe with them, now you attracted to the woman. All right, cool. If you decide to marry her, what is the big deal? You know what I'm saying? Or you decide whatever. Because people approach this from the ownership side of it. Like, oh, I own my that's my husband. You better not that yo, literally, before you came here. It, all right, this is a girl. Can't say she is, but good. I I've recorded some of it. But I don't know if it was came out clear. It's allowed me, right? But the girl was telling me how I was asked. I was really being nosy because she gave birth at the same time as another woman. So her boyfriend got her and his other guy, yeah, his other girl, pregnant. Same. According to her, she said she didn't know, but I thought they knew because he posted it on Facebook. So. I think the babies are like four or five months apart or whatever. Yeah. But he literally openly told I, I, I don't know him. Like, I know him, but we're not friends or nothing, right? But when I saw him on social media, this is a few years ago, I was giving a nigga props. He's not Muslim, but I was giving props. I was like, oh, he owning that shit. He up front with it. Later on, he ended up breaking up. So I'm asking the girl today. I said, yo, what happened with that? And she said, no, I didn't know. I didn't know the girl was pregnant. And I said, well, you didn't know, but... Did y'all break up immediately? Nah, nah. I was mad at him. We broke up. Then I took him back. And then we just broke up again. And I said, well, why did you take him back then? Right. And she said, well, I wanted to give him a chance. I said, a chance for what? Yeah. She said, I, I just wasn't 
you know, when, when, once he went back back and forth a few times about it, uh -huh. she finally admitted it really wasn't about him. I was trying to give myself a chance to see if I could get over the situation. The way she went back to it was like, yo, we're going to get back together, but I'm not sleeping with you because I'm still mad. And after a while, once she got tired of it, she cut him off. So long story short, what she was saying was that she, she was like, had he just been honest about the situation, I, maybe I would have went along with it. I said, that makes sense. Yeah. I said, but, I said, but, with all of that being said, y'all broke up. But if you felt like he was a good dude, and why couldn't you have worked it out? Y'all could have worked that situation out. She said, I don't know, I was mad. Because you let your emotions get involved. Mm -hmm. you know but at the end of the day, had his brother been up front, y'all could have, now, I don't know exactly what happened, but the, my point of it is, is you don't give people a chance, not to, to clean up something, but just to claim a chance to grow, to grow out of something. Like, yo, man, most people I know, like I, I got friends of mine, like this old heads, right? And they was doing all kind of wild shit when they was my age. They got older, they just, I can't do it no more. Yeah. Right? And now for a woman, you feel like, yo, man, um, well, I got to wait till they get, get old and want to be monogamous with me. Not necessarily, but I've heard other women say, all right, well, as long as you're not out here embarrassing me, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Then you hear the other, like, said, I said, oh, the other woman, she said, well, nah, man, I don't care. None of that. You got to be totally about me. You got to value Listen, me. Listen, man. You, it's like, man, 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 man. The most of them men that they talk about, these good men or the men that they want, is married already. That's a fact. They are married. So either you going to accept polygamy, you know what I mean? Or you going to get something else. They going to get a woman. <laughs> That's <laughs> they, true. A lot of them. A yo, lot of them yo, listen. Here, Real shit. A lot of them do that, bro. You know how many women I used to, I'm not going to say like it was a lot, it wasn't a lot. But going back like 2010, 2011, when I was looking to get married back then, and some of the sisters that I used to talk to back then, like I, I met on some of the Facebook groups, joins lesbians, Muslim lesbians now, bro. It's crazy. Like, just to see some of the same sisters that used to be in the groups with us on, on Facebook, like, and they used to reach out and be saying how they couldn't find no no, no good man and or, or, or they was talking to this brother, that brother, and this brother. And then now they on some like, well, I'm just being me. It's so many of them, bro. So it, it's, it's scary. It's like, and, and what, what happens, and I'm not saying I can't blame them because I don't think you should ever go that far, but at the end of the day, I understand people just get so hopeless. Like, they give up hope. You know, I passed around. This dude was bumping you off. This dude was bumping you off. Know, I married you. And that gets to a point. Or it's either, either they were women or they... Oh, okay. I'm a um, I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna get with a Christian. They don't well, care. They, they, they care, want somebody bro. to make them feel good. They want all that before. Yeah. You know the the I mean, guy that Muslim women are messing with Christian men. So mm -hmm. much so, I don't know. You know, they actually asking for fatwas, and they well, said that the Quran don't have no proof. I hear There's something. nothing explicit saying that a woman can't marry a non-Muslim man. That's what they saying. And this, yeah, this is what they saying. Because they don't follow fit. But this is, this, all of these joints is issues that's all going to come up because nobody is addressing these issues mm -hmm. that we have in the Islamic community. They just keep getting overlooked and brushed to the side and, and they categorize it. Oh, man, that's just a lesbian girl. Oh, this one is just that. Mm -hmm. And it's just causing further more problems. You don't want, you want to see something real bad? Like the... I got to show you this. You got to read it. You got to read it. I will. But somebody sent it to me. Look. Go ahead. Use, use, use that love and importance for the every believer in this name. I'm sure there were not many other trans or intersect Muslims there, if at all. Any besides me, to be honest. We are a very small group. So. Yeah, I see it. That's what I'm saying. What, now, what you do about that? Well, we had the whole thing on it. Yeah, we did the whole interview. We do. But I, look, bro. This is you. This is you. Yeah, that's a dude. 
That is dude for sure. with ladies, huh? Yeah, bro. They 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 said. So remember when? So where's the factual about that? No, but look, this they make their own factuals up. That's yeah. my point. No point is that everybody doing what they want to do. Well, what I'm saying when I did the interview with the brother that used to be assistant, and they were saying that um that they have evidence. I forget. They was trying to use the one companion for the prophecy song. If you watch the interview, you remember mm-hmm. he was saying, oh, yeah, it was, it was a companion of the Prophet like Sound that, you know, he, he used to uh, act like a woman. He was a man, but he used to, and he told him to go back there and pray with the woman. And I said, that's hermaphrodites. It's different. Yeah, it's different. Right? Yeah. They using it. I'm telling you, listen, in, in today's times, people are, they're going to find an excuse and a reason and a fact to do whatever they want to do. That's what I'm saying. But that's what the prophets they signed say was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, as Muslims, we have to get, then going back to what we were talking about in the beginning, right? We got to get staunch. I say, yo, declaring your conservatism isn't hate for nobody else. And that's how they take it. They take it as though yeah, us upholding our values and our morals mm-hmm. is us discriminating against. No, yeah. that's not the same thing. Yeah. 